All right, everyone can hear me? Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming. And uh, for the next uh, an hour and a half, we're going to go over some of the hands-on exercise to deploy some applications on OpenStack. Uh, for the last few days, we all hear about great things about OpenStack and Cloudify to give you the infrastructures. Um, now, how are you going to use it? And uh, how do you use it reliably? So today, we, uh, my colleague, uh, Xing Wu and uh, uh, Ted Alrani El and myself, Kanzi Zhang, we're from Big Switch. And what we do is we're providing unified physical and virtual network uh, topology or networking solutions to OpenStack. And so we have a, a Neutron backend um, providing L2 and L3 uh, plugins for the OpenStack network. And uh, the main difference between the Big, Swi Big Switch solutions from um, other SDN cap uh, solutions is that we're managing the physical switch, physical infrastructure, along with the virtual infrastructures together in a unified uh, manner. And not you don't have to manage two networks. You don't have managing the underlay, the overlay. We're managing the entire network together. So you have the, the visibilities, the config capabilities, uh, operational capabilities to managing your, all your physical switches along with your virtual switches. And on top of that, we're providing the virtual concept, virtual constructs to create uh, logical networks, logical routers, NAT, all those capabilities that we're all familiar with, with, with Neutron. So let me get into the t today's content. Um, the first, the, the today's environment, everyone should have a little uh, slip of paper. And that describes your login credentials, your passwords, and the entry points for your sandbox. Okay, and the environment. Let me give you uh, just a quick. Uh, um, uh, my my colleague going to go into a bit more details about the environment. This everyone have the environment is a is a virtual uh, environment hosted on the public cloud. And at the end of the talk, we're going to talk about if you are interested in getting more information and get more uh, uh, online times. We, we can we can uh, arrange that uh, so you can at your leisure time you can log in and then get more familiar with the with the environment. So everyone, please go to this website, labs.bigswitch.com, and you should use your credentials that piece of paper have and log in. Okay. Once you log in, and you should see on your upper right hand has a link, has a picture, just like this, to uh, take you to this Austin module. Once you click on that, you should get to this page, and then. The lower right is the launch button. So click on that, then your sandbox environment will launch up. It takes about uh, five to ten minutes for the environment to come up because everything is hosted uh, on the public cloud. So today's environment, is, uh, everything is hosted on public cloud. Okay, everyone has their own virtual instance. So what this public cloud has is has an OpenStack environment. It's a multi node environment. I had two computer nodes and uh, a, a, a controller nodes. And it has a, a simulation for the entire networking fabric. So it's a two rack deployment. Yes, sir. Uh, can I take a look? Yeah. And also, I have a colleague, uh, Syed. Uh, four of us, uh, uh, one person will be talking in the front to walk you through the whole process. And the three of us will be roaming around the room. So if you have any problems, any issues, just raise your hands and we'll, 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 reach, we'll reach you. Okay? So once you launch, just leave it there. It will take a few minutes to, uh, to get everything prepped up. So uh, let's talk about what exactly we're going to do today. All right. Um, Xing, the person in the back. All right. So we know that, uh, assume you already have OpenStack clouds up and running. All right. Now you want to, to bring some applications onto the cloud. And there's many ways of introducing this uh, uh, application onboarding process. Uh, OpenStack natively, we're providing heat, which has a t heat template capabilities. You can, you can uh, 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 write a heat template, and uh, uh, the, the, uh, you can publish it, and everyone can start using it. Right? Um, or you can use Murano, which is the catalog capability that uh, whatever is being published can, can be maintained by, the, by Murano, and then the tenant can consume it directly. So for today's for today's talk, we're using a very simple heat template and just a little bit in, the, in a little bit different manner. 
uh, the big switch we, we provide a, a, a heat uh, um, horizon plugin uh, which describe the workflow a little bit differently uh, we the way we, we envision I think we were working with the customers is that usually the cloud admin knows about the infrastructure the best he knows what are the services available uh, how many resources it has what kind of temp what kind of a topology or application they can support so usually the admin is the one that put up this uh, template the one that he can support together and verify the template works and then publish those templates to the tenant so the tenant can consume those templates All right so that's the thing that we with lip it is every underneath is using the heat but in terms of workflow that's the workflow that we are uh, we're going through today so basically the admin is the one that defined the template and then publish it but however for admin you need to be make sure that the the tenant that you publish it works right so today we're going to go into the uh, the exercise of using some of the tools to help the admins to debug if the template doesn't work the way that he expected how to how to troubleshoot and also another concept is we we we're, we're building uh, bringing the the devops environment where the admins can write a template and can write a set, set of unit tests to verify the template works but then when he evolved the templates moving forward he also can continuously run those unit tests to make sure the next version the, the version that after that continue provide the same baseline con functionality that so, it provides right so, Kongi, so, uh, let me uh, interrupt. So uh, a few folks have the problem of the e experiment has been expired. So we think th that's because the load. We never tested this in, in infrastructure with so many uh, testers at the same time. So they launched the experiment at the same time. So uh, be patient. Uh, probably wait for a while. Uh, uh, listen to the the talk and then try it again. Sorry. Yeah, just probably just uh, pace out ourselves a little bit. Um, even though everything is on public uh, cloud, the, the, the capacity is still um, sometimes congested. But anyway, that's back to the talk. That so so uh, we we sort of describe how you write a unit test for your templates. Right? So then you know that next version when you modify something that you can run those set of unit tests and make sure that the template that you publish next time it works. Right? Um, and then the next one is not when the template works, the tenant consume it. And they may they may run into some issues, right? Some maybe some network nodes goes down. Maybe some network elements are not functioning the way that, that they're supposed to. So what are the tools for you to uh, for the tenants to use to to to, to debug, right? So um, to to figure out is that application problem, is the networking problems, uh, what are the what are the the, the 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 things that they can do? So today we're going to go into that that scenarios to help you to. Um, uh, understanding not only the le network level but, but also getting to the application level what are the things that you, ha you, ha you have capability uh, at your hands to, uh, to, to, to figure it out okay um, so here oh, sorry so here's a, just the slides that uh, uh, went over what I what I just just just, just uh, described and uh, so today's workflow is that my colleague uh, Ted gonna go go walk us through on the template deployments and troubleshooting on the on templates and my colleague Shin gonna go over uh, on the troubleshooting once the template is deployed uh, on the networking issues and the application issues well, how, how, do, how do you troubleshoot and then towards the end uh, we're going to close to summarize what we what we just gone through and uh, and then go over the lo logistics of how to continue accessing this environment uh, at your leisure time all right thank you very much uh, Ted Okay, so sorry about uh, the issues you're having. Um, can we get uh, maybe a raise of hands of people who already have the setup working for them? Okay, and uh, for people who didn't, don't have it yet, please be patient a little bit uh, and uh, try in, in maybe a few minutes. Uh, the system probably should be able to handle the load again in a few minutes. So <coughs> let me get started on the hands-on part of the session. So the setup that you have in front of you is using Big Cloud Fabric as the network provider for the OpenStack Cloud. Okay, and what does this mean? This means that uh, anytime you go to, let's say, Horizon and provision a network, there will be a uh, ML2 driver and L3 plugin uh, from Big Switch, 
that will communicate with our controller and provision these networks. Uh, and what's really cool about uh, Big Cloud Fabric is, is that it's, it will provision your L2, L3 uh, state for your networks in both the virtual and the physical part of the network. So you don't have to handle both separately. And it's all automated, of course. So that's the setup that you have in front of you. And uh, if, you, if you have seen at the beginning, there is that page that you get. This will provide you access to Horizon. So if you go under the hands-on lab tab, make sure everybody who has the setup at least got to this page. And when you right click on the uh, OpenStack icon, there is a drop down menu, Horizon. Click on it, it, takes, it will take you to Horizon. Similarly, when you click on Big Cloud Fabric, uh, right click on the icon for the controller, click on Big Cloud Fabric, and you'll have a page for Big Cloud Fabric. So, this setup that you have in front of you really consists of two racks, two uh, physical racks. Each rack has a single compute node. Uh, there you see, like, there is a C. OS C1, that's the first compute node, the second compute node, OS C2, and each rack has two leaf switches. Um, now, there's a virtual switch running on the compute nodes, on each of the compute nodes, and the leaf switches are interconnected at the top with spine switches to form a full mesh. Okay? So when you log into Horizon, and if you haven't done so, please do so, uh, log in with uh, user dev, uh, dev user as the username, dev user, password bsn123. So dev user. So once you log into that dev user, you'll see like you're already in the dev project. And the setup that you have is really a single project that we have pre-created for you. And there's a second project test. The dev project is pretty much empty. There's nothing in it. And this is where you will be deploying your three-tier app using the heat template. Okay? The test project is just there for helping us to do reachability tests to the external, you know, publicly facing uh, web servers in our three-tier app. Uh, so it's only for testing purposes. And as you can see, the test project has this test server and has a floating IP address assigned from the external network. Again here, the external network, we have already created it, so you don't have to touch anything. It's already there, ready to be used and to serve floating IP addresses. Okay? So this is the goal of uh, the, the setup. We want to deploy that three-tier app in the dev project. We'll go into the details of what, what is in that app. But let's, before doing that, let's go ahead and just deploy the app and let it run in the background while we talk about what's in the heat template and what are the main components of it. So if you go to your in dev user, your in dev project, navigate to project, and then network, and then there is this network fabric tab here. This is part of the Big Switch Horizon plugin. You click on it, and it should take you there, and then choose the network template, and click the Apply Network Template button. So here there is a list, there should be a list of heat templates that the admin user has created and verified for you. And you can, uh, as a regular user of the OpenStack Cloud, you can choose any of them and run them. So the purpose really is to have the admin uh, create uh, you know, templates that 
are verified to work or you know their common templates and share them with the rest of the users so that you can you know make things go faster in terms of uh, template development so we have for this case we have developed this big switch template let's choose it and run it so this shows you here a list of the default values uh, for your parameters and the template and again we'll go over them in, in a little bit uh, but we'll just keep the default values in and say apply template and continue from here so now it should be on its way to uh, provisioning the setup okay so while this is happening let me go back and uh, talk a little bit about what's in that heat template uh, really quickly because you know it, it's it, we're not really here talking about heat uh, templates in, in specific but we we'll, this is something we need to run before we get to the point where we can talk about troubleshooting your network and uh, you know doing monitoring and other sort of things so this heat template uh, just like almost all heat templates that you see around uh, starts with the parameters section and the parameter parameters section what we're really doing is just defining uh, in this case, the names of the private networks. So uh, if you see here, there's this outer net name, and uh, it's defining a network name, and the default value is WebNet. That's what we will be using in the setup. And then there is also, with each private network, we associate a uh, CIDR subnet, and we give, we give a default value. So for example, the outer network, which really corresponds to the WebNet private network, has a CIDR value 10.10.20.0/24, and then um, so I forgot to mention if you go back to your uh, main setup and if you want to take a look at the whole heat template, just click on configuration examples and scroll down through it. So we, I already mentioned uh, the parameters section. You know there are we talked about then private network names, the CIDR values, et cetera. And there is also at the top, I forgot to mention that, there's an external network name. This is, and the default value is external, which maps really to the external network that we have already created for you on the setup. And then if we scroll down to the resources, which is really the meat of this uh, template, uh, we start defining the actual resources that will be provisioned, beginning with the outer network, and as you notice, there we're choosing the name that we, uh, the name parameter, the user input. Uh, the default value for this one will be WebNet. And then we create the subnet resource, and we associate it with the outer network. Okay. We do the same thing for the mid network, and for the inner network. And then the second part, important part of the heat template is the router that will interconnect these private networks together. And the router has a default route to the external network. Again, this is a definition uh, coming from the parameter list. Then we declare the router interfaces. So there are interfaces to all three private networks. Okay, so there they are, the three of them. And then of course we have to create our servers. So in each of the private networks we create a single server so there will be a web server for the web network. The webs, each of the servers will have a port, a neutron port defined for it. And we associate with the uh, port a, a number of secu a security groups uh, resource with the rules and a floating IP in the case of the web server. The web server is a public facing server, unlike the other two servers that we're defining here in the in this heat template. So um, these are the other two servers. So there's the app server and the DB server. So that's pretty much what this heat template is about. And uh, you could go back and uh, check now to see how far the uh, provisioning is. So here it looks like it has completed. If you see some issues, if you see some failures, please uh, remove the template and try again to uh, provision it. Okay, so how many people approximately have the template provisioned? Only three? 
four, five, six, a few people. Maybe it'll take a few minutes to have the heat template. We're still at the launch. Password for dev user. It's uh, BSN123, Big Switch Networks123. So once the template provisions, uh, if you go to instances under compute, you will see the three instances that we defined in the, t in the heat template. Uh, please note down the uh, IP addresses because we'll be using them in a little bit, including the floating IP for the web server. So uh, I'll uh, uh, I saw quite a few folks uh, started the wrong, uh, wrong lab. Uh, so though, Ted, can you show how to start the right lab again from our portal? Show. So Sorry. how to start the right lab. So they started the wrong lab, the other labs. Oh, I see. I see. OK. So let, let's back up a little bit here then. Uh, Let's go to labs.fixwitch.com. So you log into this page. Don't click on any of these modules. The easiest way to get to the module from the top, click on that banner, the Austin banner, summit banner. And then it will take you to the last module at the bottom and launch this one. Now, if you have launched already a module and uh, it's probably provisioned, uh, please terminate it. And the way to do that, go to the top under the modules drop down menu. Select your, there will be only a single one. Select that module, and then it will say, uh, you know, it will give you this thing, this uh, page, say terminate, and give it a, probably a minute or so. It will terminate, and then you can go back and launch the summit module at the end of the page. Okay? Any questions on that? So let's proceed here. So as we have seen, we have provisioned that three-tier app, and uh, we have declared security groups for each of the servers on the heat template. And when we declared these security groups, we had some sort of reachability requirements in mind. We wanted, let's say, for example, that the app server to be able to you know, receive uh, requests from the web server but only from the web server. We don't want any other machine on the setup to be able to make uh, you know, calls on the app server. Similarly, we wanted the DB server to accept connections on the inbound, you know, on the ingress, only from the app server or from the app tier. Uh, so we don't want to you know, have calls coming from the web server directly onto our DB server, right? So we have those sorts of reachability requirements in mind. The issue is when you write your security groups, it's easy to miss certain rules 
or to you know, put the, the wrong remote IP for a given rule and then allow uh, reachability that you don't really want to be there at the beginning, okay? So how do we put in a certain number of tests that we can use over and over again? Tests that are similar really to unit tests that developers use uh, that you could run any time you update your template. And just to make sure that your reachability requirements are always satisfied. And that's what we were gonna talk uh, about next, okay? So if we start, let's take for example the web server talking to the app server. We want on the ingress at the app server to accept connections from the web server. We want that to happen. How can we verify that? So one of the things that you will see on the uh, Horizon GUI under network, network fabric, there is a reachability tests tab. And here you say, I want to create a test Okay, and I'm gonna call my test web app to verify reachability from the web to the app to make sure that my security groups were configured properly. Okay, and then I want to choose a tenant. A tenant in Big Cloud Fabric Lingo is equivalent to the project. So in this case, the project is dev. Okay, and the source segment is the web net, segment is equivalent to network in OpenStack, okay. And then my source IP would be the IP address of uh, my mm, web server. And if you've forgotten what the IP address, please go back and hook it up. So in this case, it's 20.3, 10.20.3. It has to be in the 1010.20 subnet, and the destination is the app server. So 10.10.21.3. And what we want here is to have the test pass for forwarded traffic. So when we forward traffic, we want the test to pass. So we can select the expected result to forward it, and then create the test. So the next step would be to run the test. And it says here it passed. So that's good. That means our rules that we had put in the security groups for both uh, machines, the web server and the app, surf app server were correct, okay? So the egress was fine at the web server and the ingress is okay also on the app server. So we can take a look, if you click at, sorry about that, let's go back here. There's that link. If you click on that link, it will show you some of the details of that test. So at the end here, this is the first hop. This UUID represents the web server. This is the web server UUID. And the next hop is OS Compute 2, which is really a virtual switch running on the second compute node, okay? And then directly connected to that is the app server. Okay, so. So let's go quickly and go to the next test. We want to write a test to make sure that uh, DB server is allowing ingress connections from the app server. So again, back to project, network, network fabric. And then we create a new test. This time we call it app db. The tenant or project is still the same, that's dev. The segment this time is app network. And the source IP address is 10.10.21.3, so that of the app server. The destination is the db server. And again, we want the expected result of this test would be forwarded. We want the traffic to be forwarded. Okay. So we run the test. It, 
passed again. That's great. And we can take a look quickly at the details. So again, it looks like they were configured on the same machine. Uh, So finally, we want to write a test to make sure that the web server cannot directly talk to the DB server. So in a way, it's a negative test that has to pass. And let's call it web DB, source tenant. We're still in the same project, so dev. Source segment is web network or source network, and we put in the IP address of the web server. Destination is the IP address of the DB server. And in this case, we want to, the traffic to be dropped by security groups. So we'll say that the expected connection result is not permitted by security groups. Let's create this test. We'll run the test. So the test has failed. So what we are reading here, it's saying that the expected was not permitted by security groups, but actually the traffic was forwarded. Now. This doesn't give us a lot of information about where the problem with security groups is. It could be that the egress uh, on the web server is blocked, or it could be the ingress at the DB server. So there is another test that we could do, this time from Big Cloud Fabric itself. If you go to Big Cloud Fabric, and at the beginning you'll see, if you log in, the login is admin bsn123. Let me log out here and make sure that everybody is in first. So admin, password is bsn123. Okay. Um, if you click on fabric at the beginning, you'll see the fabric that you have on your setup, fabric of switches, both physical and virtual switches. So this, these are the spines, and these are the leaves. This is the first track, this is the second track, and these are the virtual switches for each of the compute hosts, okay? And you can look at the connections. So if you look, click on a leaf switch, you see that it's forming a mesh with the spines, and there is a peering connection with the leaf switch on the same rack, okay? So back to our test, uh, reachability tests. Let's go to edge and endpoints. So on this page, what you're seeing, what you're looking at is really a list of neutron ports. These are all the ports that have been configured, including taps for DHCP and the ports for the instances, okay? And this allows you really to perform reachability tests between any two ports on your OpenStack uh, pod, okay? So let's repeat that test that we just did. Uh, we started from the web server. So let's look up the web server by IP address. It's easier. Uh, it's 20.3. So that's the web server endpoint, okay? So, and this is here the neutron port for the web server. So if you go at, at, the, at the beginning here, there is a drop down, and you could choose test path from that drop down. Uh, who, who's so far at this point? A few people, okay. Any questions before we continue from here? We're good, okay. So I selected the first endpoint to be the web server. Now I can select my destination. 
and uh, so you say endpoint <laughs> here and then look for the destination which is the DB server so 22.3 that's the DB server you select it then say use selected and then at the top run simulate so once the test runs you could see on the right hand side uh, the segment interfaces the tenant which is pretty much the project here the dev project in OpenStack and the endpoints okay this is a logical view of th this test step and under this list here you would see the different steps that the traffic has taken so at the web server with this IP address you see that there's a rule that has allowed the traffic out so on the egress we are fine for a web server okay and then from there we went to the router and then here at the DB server it looks like the traffic was allowed in at the ingress too so this is not what we had in mind we thought that our DB will allow ingress traffic only from the app tier okay but it looks like there is a rule at the ingress that is allowing traffic from anywhere so that points us directly to where the problem is let's go back to horizon and check what happening what's happening with our uh, security groups if you go to compute under access and security and then we look at the DB server let's manage the rules see what's in there well it looks so at the ingress we're allowing traffic from anywhere that's that's where the issue is we can change that let's delete this rule and add in another rule that would allow traffic only from the app tier so. by the way we're using ICMP it could be any traffic but just for the demo purposes here we're just using ICMP so on the ingress we're allowing traffic only from the app tier 10.21 0 slash 24 let's add this rule <coughs> then we can go back to the reachability test that we had already written under network fabric so network network fabric and run it again so again this is a test from web to DB and this time it passed if you look at the details we see that uh, you know uh, we were able to get uh, the test and it looks like it has been dropped here okay okay so we we have verified the reachability requirements within the private networks but we haven't done anything on the external network yet we don't know if an external host can reach our public fa publicly facing web server. Let's put this on hold for a little bit. And uh, <coughs> before we go there, let's look at some other possibilities for uh, you know, traffic control. So if we look at the uh, big switch horizon plugin again, uh, you could use something like the traditional router ACLs that people usually use to do pretty much the same thing uh, but what this also allows you and this is even nicer is that you can control traffic between subnets you don't have to configure security groups on an instance by instance basis okay so I could say I don't I want I don't want the traffic to go between DBnet and my webnet so I can go and say okay this is this here the upper row is the are the destinations this is, these are the sources so I can say I don't want my DB net to talk to my web net okay and block the traffic and similarly I don't want to my web net to talk to my DB net okay 
So if you go back now and uh, look at the same test that we ran a while ago for these two instances, we just say simulate again. And you look at the last hop, you will see that the traffic has been denied. So we couldn't at the router level this time, not at the instance level. And that, that's what uh, the ACL did, okay? So in the last part, let's try to uh, see if we can externally reach uh, our uh, publicly facing web server. So go back to Horizon and log out from dev user. And let's go to the test project, see if we can ping the web server. So log in as test user. And the best password is BSN123, again. Okay, and here we have already created the instances for you. So the test uh, instance is connected to the external network. Um, if you don't have them up, start the instances. Please start this BSN span instance as well. We'll be using it in the next section. And in this case, the floating IP of the web server is 130. So 20, 20, 20 dot 130. And start the ping to verify that you can reach the web server instance. So at this time, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna have uh, Shin take over and go over the monitoring application use case. Uh, okay, Shin. Yeah, let's uh, slow down a little bit. Uh, I saw a few friends have some problems, so I'll just slow down uh, for now and uh, explain a few things. Uh, first, uh, uh, first, how to uh, get on this lab. So the way to get on this lab is go to bigswitch.com and uh, so our homepage, in the homepage, so there is a big switch lab. So if you go there, you click on it, and if you scroll down this page all the way to the very bottom, there is an OpenStack summit. So this is the, the lab designed for this, for this summit. So you click on the launch, the launch on the bottom, not on the top, the top belongs to a, another lab. If you click on, click on that, You'll start the you'll start this lab. So and another thing is, uh, once you get into it, you get into this uh, lab environment. There are three tabs on the top right. So the first tab is called uh, directions. So the first tab is called the directions. So where you can find the slides. So 
So it's a self-guided manual. If you follow the slides, it will, uh, you will accomplish whatever we show today. Uh, take your time. Uh, so on the second tab, that's the, that's the physical topology of this lab. So in this physical topology, we have two racks. Each rack has two leaf switch, and uh, there are two spine switches connect this, uh, these two racks. And in each rack, there is one compute node. And uh, on top of each compute node, there is a virtual switch. Virtual switch is connected to both of the leaves. That's the physical topology. Oops. So that is the f physical topology uh, uh, we are w working on today. And uh, uh, logically, what we are trying to accomplish today is if you go back to the slides, So logically, what we want to accomplish today is to use heat template to deploy a project called, the project is named as dev. So I know many people log on Horizon using the username ad admin. Uh, however, we didn't provision anything underneath the admin. So the, the heat template is not, a de not for admin. So the, the, the username for the, the username for the, uh, for the first uh, set of uh, lab is using, is using dev user. The password is bsn123. So here we see the username is dev user, dev user. The password is uh, bsn123. So bsn stands for big switch network. So if you log on as this user, which is not admin, and you go to project, you go to project networks and the network of fabric. So you'll see, you'll see a tab called a uh, network template. That's, that is where you apply the heat template. So it's already applied, so we don't have the button anymore. But if uh, you just reach here, uh, you'll see apply a template. If you click on it, you'll see the template which shows up uh, which shows up here. If you go to the web, uh, the lab portal, the third button, that's what I'm going to to show uh, here. This is the template that gets applied on this dev user, in this dev user. So this this template this template creates creates a a project called a dev, and it consists of three networks and one router. These three networks are attached to this router, and each of the network has a, has a server, web, uh, app, and a DB server. And then we uh, associate a floating IP with, with, this, web, uh, with this web server. Uh, that's the very first part of this lab. So then, um, what we have done by far is uh, we, we have this three-tier app. And we would like to achieve this. Uh, we would like to achieve this connectivity requirement, which is web server can talk to app server, and app server can talk to DB server. However, web server cannot directly talk to to DB server. That's what, what we try. Uh, we, we try to achieve. So, given the the heat template is complex like like this, how can we even tell if our heat template is correct or not. So to, to figure out if our heat template can achieve the requirement, uh, the approach we take is like a, a test-driven uh, heat template developing and debugging. So what we've done is we, if you go to the, the project network and the network of fabric, there is a reachability test. So like Ted has already done, is we create a three tests, which is web to app, app to DB, web to DB, uh, which exactly matches here. And in each test, in each test, if we, we take this web to app ex example, 
for each test, we specify what is the what is the source, what is the destination of the test. So in this particular example, the source is a, the the web server's IP address. The destination is the DB server's IP address, is the app server's IP address. So we expect that these two servers can talk to each other. So uh, we expect these servers can talk to each other. So if we go to the expected result, you can see actually there are quite a few expected results. Some is drop, drop by policy, uh, drop by security group. Uh, there are quite a few possibilities, but in this particular uh, test, we actually want the packet to be forwarded. So we pick the expected uh, result to be forwarded. Then we, we save this test. And, and then we run this test. So the result is passed. So which means, which means our heat template satisfies the requirement in the first place, which means that the web can talk to the application. Uh, so similarly, if we follow the same logic to, to configure the, using I, I, in, this, in this network fabric reachability test, we configure two other tests, which is app to DB and the web to DB. We created two other tests and uh, we, we do similar thing uh, we can verify if our heat template really uh, achieves our goal. So in, in previous example, what we have done is uh, app to db can absolutely talk to each other, and the web to db, they cannot talk to each other because there is a security policy configuration error in the heat template. So we fix that uh, uh, security group and the test passes. So uh, that's what we have done so far. Uh, when I was uh, down there, uh, some friends asked, uh, what does this test exactly mean here? And is it a, a HTTP or is it a, a pin? So in here, we just use a pin as a demonstration. However, you can configure much more complex tests. For example, you can configure UDP, you can configure TCP, uh, uh, so you can configure the, the different L, L4 ports, yes. But in this particular uh, test, we are using pin for demonstration purpose. Uh, so that's what we have done so far. And uh, with Big Switch, with Big Switch uh, SDN solution, Big Cloud Fabric SDN solution, uh, what we can achieve uh, on top of that is uh, if you go to Big Switch UI, you will see in the visibility, there is a test pass uh, icon. If you click on into that, and you can configure the exact same test as you did in the Horizon GUI. However, we provide a much richer uh, information over here. For example, uh, we, we tell you exactly what the packet look like, what are the headers, and uh, we tell you exactly what are the effective routes and the policies. In this particular example, this is the effective uh, security group. It tells you explicitly which secur security group is effective. That's why this packet can get through this hop. Uh, that's for the uh, uh, that's for the uh, uh, for the instances. On the logical routers, so Ted has right now uh, pr just now uh, in the router grid, we block the communication between two subnets. So in Big Switch GUI, we can see exactly the policy is effective. The packet will get dropped because of this policy. This policy is the echo in the router. Okay, so this basically gives you, if you are more like a networking admin uh, uh, background and you are more familiar with, uh, with echoes, more familiar with the uh, want to manage a network from a subnet perspective, so this is the, this is the tool you, you are going to use. So, uh, is there any more questions about what we have done so far? Okay, uh, I'll continue then. So, <coughs> so right now, uh, with, with uh, 
with the help of a heat template and with the help of this networking, powerful networking debugging tool, we can provision the three-tier application. We can make sure these applications are connected uh, correctly and their behavior uh, as we expected. We can even tell the exact physical path between each of the two uh, instances. So which interface the packet gets in, which interface the packet gets out. Uh, however, uh, that's pretty cool. However, that's not enough. That's not enough. So let me give you an example. Uh, say uh, you have a multi-tier application. And in your web tier, you have like a tens or even hundreds of web servers there. And you put a load balancer in front of it. And uh, some customers are complaining, how come your website be becomes so slow? And uh, when you are doing the test, the load balancer always directs your traffic to the good web servers. So they are fine. They are perfectly fine. But only occasionally, uh, the load balancer directs the traffic to some uh, bad web server. And uh, it's just an out of your control. You just don't know which are the bad web, web servers. So usually the way to, to debug those scenarios is you really, really need to look at the, the packet level, look at the trace to see if there's any TCP packet drop, to see if the congestion window is somehow never, never, never go, goes up. So to see if your uh, TCP delay act is turn, turned on accidentally, something like that. Uh, so how do you actually identify which is a pro problematic web server if you have multiple of them? So usually, in traditional network, the way people uh, debug this scenario is first, you have to really locate where is each individual web server. So you have to know, OK, this web, web, server, web server one is attached to uh, my physical leaf switch one. My web server two is uh, physically attached to leaf switch, say, five, or something like that, or, or virtual switch. It doesn't matter. You have to locate that web server. And then you have to go to that switch where that web server attached to and config a span. So to redirect the traffic, to, to basically mirror the traffic to another port. And on the destination port, you attach a, a tool, for example, of a Wireshark. And then you look at the packet trace. You have to do this step for every single web server. That's just uh, like too much work. That's not a one day or even one week job. Uh, that's too much. So, uh, so with the beauty of uh, SDN centralized control, we can really simplify this work, th th this workload. Okay. So the high level idea is with the centralized control, we the controller knows exactly where each instance is, and because of that. You can tap traffic. You don't have to tap traffic based on port. You just tap the traffic based on the, the logical some concepts. For example, I just want to tap the traffic belonging to this subnet. Or I just want to tap the traffic belongs to this tenant. Or I just want to tap the traffic which has the, 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 the destination port 8080. It doesn't matter where it shows up in the network. You can have all these crazy combinations and uh, from the logical perspective just to tell what you want instead of physically locating where is each endpoint. So uh, this is what we are trying to do over here. Uh, so let, let, let's just get back to this, this, this picture uh, we are very familiar with. So we've, we have created a three-tier app in this staff tenant over here. And uh, we have this web app DB. And we associated the floating IP in this web server. It didn't show up over here, but we, we've, we've done that in the heat template. And then there is another project called Test, uh, which has been poorly uh, uh, configured for you. So you don't have to provision this, this network. The purpose of this, this tenant, the purpose of this project is to purely testing, basically purely testing if this web server is reachable. We've already shown that. We can use this test server to ping the floating IP of the web server. We've already shown that. So now, now uh, I I have a question. What if I want to I want to tap all the traffic with the destination uh, to the floating IP of this web server? 
in a so in a traditional network, how are you even going to do that? Uh, there's basically no way to make it happen, even on port by port basis, right? So what I'm going to do over here is I'm go first I'm going to uh, start an instance, a regular instance in OpenStack, which is a VM. Uh, in this case, we already pre-created it for you, called a BSN span. It's over here. That's a regular VM instance, right? So we start a TCP dump on this instance. And now we are going to do some magic. The, the, count, the result of the magic is all the traffic that goes between this web uh, subnet and uh, whatever, whatever the source is will be spanned across the, across the entire fabric to this VM. And in this VM, you can, uh, you can start whatever tool, for example, a TCP dump, uh, to really look at the packet. Uh, we capture all the traffic. So, uh, so let's, let's go ahead and do that. So the way to do it is uh, first, you go to a big switch, uh, big cloud fabric GUI, in the UI, you, 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 you see this vis visibility. In the visibility, there is a span. You click on that. So let's do it. Uh, here. So we do. There is a visibility, and there is a span. We click on that. OK. So in this, in this portal, we see there are, there are two. One is one is called a local local span, another is called a fabric span. So we are not going to talk about the local span, which is the traditional uh, networking span. You span, you make span uh, on port basis, box by box. So we support that, but that's not cool. So we start we start with this fabric span, which means we can very flexibly uh, define the criteria, the traffic you want to span across the entire network, physically or logically, it doesn't matter. And uh, we, spy the des uh, we specify the destination, either we want to span the traffic all the way to that destination. Uh, so you probably have seen something uh, over here in your, in your setup. So uh, I'll just delete it. Uh, we do it from scratch. I'll just delete it. OK, so the next step is we are going to configure a fabric span here. You see this plus button, you click on it. So it's, this is like a, a wizard style of uh, UI. In here, we need for every span session, uh, we need to specify a name. So I used to call it BSN span. We just give it the same name. So it's absolutely active. And uh, we assign a priority because uh, span can uh, span can have like different priorities. If we define multiple span sessions, uh, if they have overlapped policies, you want some span sessions to be like a have higher priority than other ones. Right? So here we just uh, give it one. Okay. So here it's called a destination span, the destination span fabric interface group, which is it's the destination which port you want this this span all the span of traffic go to. So here, uh, we support the, the, the type of port we support. The port can be on a virtual switch. The port can be on a physical switch. The port can be on multiple physical switches. And those, those ports form a, 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 a lag style of thing. So the traffic is load balanced between those lags. So in this demo, uh, we are going to use a virtual switch be, be, because we already like bring up a virtual instance somewhere in the network. We don't know even where that is. So, uh, so, okay, so I have a BSN spam port over here. So I, I'm not going to use it. Probably you have it as well. So we are, I'm not going to use it. Instead, I'm going to create another destination port. Uh, uh, so I'll call it BSN spam, give it a whatever name. So we know this destination spam port will be on a virtual switch. Uh, will be on a virtual switch. So instead of a leaf switch, we, we choose the virtual switch. So now we really need to know where this packet is going. Where this packet is going. So the way to figure out is if we go to uh, the go to the horizon horizon UI, we log in 
So if we if we look at if we look at this the, the, the high level goal we are trying to achieve, this BSN span uh, VM instance is already uh, booted up in this test tenant. So what we right now we are trying to find out where is this this instance attached to. So the way to figure it out is you go to uh, you go to the Horizon Horizon GUI and log in as test as test user. So the username is no longer dev user, it is test user. The password is still the same at the BSN123. BSN stands for Big Switch Networks. Uh, you connect into it, you go to the project, and then you look at the instances. Right? You see this PSN span. There is already an instance over here. It's pre-created uh, pre for you just for, for this lab. So we go to that instance. So it's a, it's a Ubuntu server. The username and the password for this server is username is Ubuntu. Password is also Ubuntu, and n n n no capital. So this is a regular Ubuntu server. And if we do a uh, uh, if config, we see there are two interfaces. One is link local, another is is zero. So basically, there's just one one interfaces. So we what we want to achieve again is we want to span all the traffic all the way to this this instance. That's what we want, across the entire network. That's what we want to achieve. So right here, if we if we do a TCP dump. So uh, in this demo, we are going to use SMP. So I use SMP to filter all the uh, other traffic. If we do a TCP dump over here, uh, so at this point, nothing happens. At this point, nothing happens. So, oops. Oh, yes. Okay, at this point, uh, nothing happens. We just leave it there. We just leave it there. Uh, so uh, we go back to the, uh, so we, we know there's an instance. We want to spend the traffic to this instance. Now, from the networking perspective, we need to spend the traffic exactly to the port where this, in this instance is attached to. So the way to figure out the port is pretty straightforward. If you are family, fairly familiar with OpenStack, you just go to the admin tab, and in the admin tab, there is a network. You go to that network, and then we see there is a uh, network called BSN span. That's where the, that instance is lives in. You go in there, you go in there, you check out the ports. This is the ports uh, that instance attached to. You go to that port, so here's, in, here's all the information. It tells you that instance attached to a host, the, a vi virtual switch on the host, a computer node one, the, the, the interface UUID is a 3BB77 something. So you noted all this information, and you go back to the, uh, go back to the, to the big switch GUI. So we stopped, over, we stopped over here just now. So we want to, we want to use that switch one, uh, that virtual switch one on the, com that virtual switch on the computer node one, the port is the three uh, three three BB seven seven. That's that that's a QVO port. So this is the destination port we want to span the traffic to. Okay, so we submit it. So at this point, we will configure uh, a span session, a fabric level span session using BSN span. That's the name. Give it a priority one, and the destination goes to a virtual s a port on a virtual switch. That's what we have done. So you click on next. So here, that's where the magic happens. Here, we are really going to specify a few policies. So to, to, hi to basically to highlight what kind of a traffic we are interested in across the entire fabric. It doesn't matter where it shows up. 
it doesn't matter if it's a physical concept or logical concept. So, so what we do is there is a plus button. We click on it. We click on it. So we can see you can configure a whole lot of things, uh, different layers of the packet. So on the top, you can specify the logical level. For example, you can specify what tenant you are interested in. And uh, what, uh, if you specify a tenant, you, 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 you specify a segment. The segment in OpenStack world is called a network. You can specify logically over here. And if you move, go down, scroll down a little bit, you, you'll see, OK, I can actually match on the much more criteria. For example, we can match on ether type, IP proto, all, all those like L2 and L3 headers. And uh, we can also match on some higher level. See, this goes all the way to layer four, the TCP UDP port. So in this particular example, uh, so I'm going to span all the traffic in this external network to this, to this guy. So the reason I'm doing this is because this, net, this web server and this test, web, the test server, they are talking to each other using floating IP. So essentially what happens is they are all, the destination of both direction is some, some IP in this external network. So that's why I'm typing from this external network. So go back. Uh, the external, the external uh, IP prefix is uh, 20, 20, 20 dot 0 slash 24. 24. OK, you specify it here. That's the destination IP. So you append it. So you save it. So now, now you have a session, a span session. What, what it does is basically span all the traffic, which is designated to the, uh, to the external subnet, will all span it to that VM. So let's go to the OpenStack GUI. Uh, to check out what's on the VM. Instances. We go to that instance. Let me see if there's any traffic going on. So we go to the test server. Yeah, it stopped. So I start the traffic to the, this is the test server, and I start the ping to the, uh, to the web web floating IP. I start the ping over here. See, the ping goes through. And then we go back to the, we ba go back to the span instance. Let's start the TCP dump again. See if something happens. Huh? Nothing happens. So, what's going on? So let's go go back to the BS, uh, big switch GUI and uh, check on check on the destination port. So check on the destination port. So right now we have see two destination ports. So I probably c uh, configured the wrong port. Let me delete this BS and span port. And I go back. So 
we add it in it? We double check the destination port and we double check the, the policies over here. Okay, we save it. Then, so that was a misconfiguration. So I, I, I spent it to the wrong destination port. But we can see from now, here, we get the traffic on this instance. So what it shows up here, so this 20, that's a, that 20 3 that's the web server, the private IP address of the web server. The, traf the, the, the traffic between the web server and the test server is using the test server's floating IP of the destination. And this is the traffic from the, from the private IP address of the test server to the, f uh, to the floating IP of the web server. So we see both directions. So this is just a simple demo that with the centralized control, we can span the traffic across the entire network without knowing where, where each server is. Okay, so then we can do the TCP dump or whatever flow analysis uh, using this powerful tool. So now I, uh, that's the end of my session. Now I hand my job to Kanzi. Thank you, Xin. Hello? Thank you, Xin Ted. So just, just summarize, uh, what we have done today. <laughs> yeah. So what we've done today is, um, first one, um, the admin, you can construct a template for your tenants to consume. And you can apply the DevOps models to your template creations and writing a set of test-driven uh, unit tests to make sure that the evolution of your template is still consistent with your policies. And then Xing also demonstrate the, uh, the span capability. The span capability that's di uh, different from our traditional world is that before you have to physically know where you want to span from and where you span to. But with this fabric approach, you can always still have the same, same capability as you had before, physical span. But in addition to that, you can also span based on your logical topology because that's what the cloud is about. You don't know where your VM is. The Nova is the one that schedules the VM anywhere that you like, right? And as a, as your admin, you're not supposed you you don't need to have the burden to figure out where the VM is in order to do span. So here, what what we provide you is a logical construct. You just tell me what segment, what logical network you are interested, and the fabric will figure out where the VMs are, where the endpoints are. This not only applies to to, to virtual endpoints, the physical. If you have a physical physical service connecting to the, your OpenStack cloud, ironic nodes, or your legacy d database, whatever, they can all connect to the same fabric, and you can use the same API, the same uh, constructs to span any logical endpoints or the physical locations to a particular location. Right? If your tool is connected to the fabric as well, that tool can be leveraged by multiple tenants, by admins for different type of uh, 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 debugging. Uh, you can you can attach multiple tools to your fabric, and for example, you can do you can do Wireshark. You can do some sort of DDoS detections. You can you can do some sort of behavior analysis tools, all attached to the fabric, and then spend the traffic over there to do some additional analysis for your network. Right. So that's what this this uh, this uh, Xing's uh, demonstration was about. Is really we embrace the logical network construct and be able to bring those traditional debugging capabilities into this cloud and, and leveraging those logical uh, 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 constructs. All of these are possible because the Big Cloud Fabric is managing not just the virtual networks, but also the physical networks. Right? So we, get, we, we know both virtual world and the physical world so that for the first case, the test path 
all the tests, because we know both constructs and we can link them together. The two are not independent to each other. They are, co they are combined together. Fabric knows, the controller knows everything about the physical path as well as the logical path. And so that it knows every single hop, what happens in the logical world as well as the physical world. And it can tell you what, how, the, for the, how the physical path getting realized in your, in your, in your, in your network. Right? And same thing with the fabric. It knows where are the, uh, where are the locations and be able to, to create a span session on demand from the, the, the moment that the packet in, uh, enter the fabric and then create a span sessions and span the traffic to whichever point that you want in the fabric. And so that's, that's the thing that really differentiates and, and different from our approach from anybody else's approach is we managing the network physical and virtual together. So physical switch is under controller management as well as your logical construct, all under one single control plane. So that's, if anything you want to take away, it's, it's, it's the, the different approach. There's no overlay network, there's no underlay network, there's one, just, just one network that you, you need to manage. Right? And uh, uh, just to conclude, sorry for the, today's uh, unexpected load. When we, we, we did some testing to uh, 30, and we assumed that, okay, 30 equivalent to 100. That's <laughs> very not the case. So you can always welcome to log on to labs.bigswitch.com and enter your uh, uh, emails and uh, we will give you access. So you, in, a, in about 30 minutes, you will get a approval letters and give you the username and the password and you can do everything that we did today, including step-by-step -step instructions and, and do at a leisure time. Right, so you can just log in and, and then you have your own sandbox environment and you can uh, have your own experience of how OpenStack integrates with the uh, Cloud Fabric, uh, unified uh, P plus V, right? Uh, thank you very much. Any, any question, we'll be hanging around, and uh, uh, so you're welcome to, uh, to approach any one of us, and uh, uh, let's chat. Oh, by the way, by the way, there are of OpenStack and the Big Switch Cloud Fabric and uh, other, other products, so feel free to play with it. That's a good point. expired maybe end of the week or something like that. But if you're interested, and uh, once I mean, any time basically, you just log in yourself, ask for access, and we'll we'll give you access.